Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about track armor, how to apply it, what it's for, see how it does. The reason is I'm going to go autocrossing in a couple days. Now those of you that have been following the channel probably heard me say we're going to do uh, chassis reinforcement next. That's a major project. I don't have time to do that before this event coming up, so we're going to handle this. Now why am I talking about this stuff? Well, those of you that might have missed it, I went drag racing for the first time and I paid the consequences by not using this because all four quarter panels got a ton of rock chips. Yeah, so if you need to go check out that video, you can hear at the end of every run a ton of gravel going on. I'm still pissed off about it. So what we're going to do today is uh, apply this stuff on each quarter panel. You can also apply this on the front of your car if you're actually going road racing and you're following someone and you're getting debris kicked up by the car in front of you. But because I'm autocrossing, the only debris I'm going to be hitting are probably traffic cones. <laughs> and I don't know if this will help against a traffic cone and I hope to not run over a, a cone head on. So we'll see how that goes. So today we're going to review how to install this. I've never done it before, so I'll do a couple panels first then show you what I learned by applying to another couple panels and show you the destruction that happened from drag racing. And then the end of this video will be actually at the track. We'll see how it does and how to take it off safely. That's the plan. So let me open this package. And by the way, this package has a squeegee inside it, so that's helpful. But I'm gonna open it up, read the directions, and I'll meet you back at a quarter panel. I promised you I'd show you the chips from drag racing. 98% of these are from that track, which is disturbing to say the least. Now let me back up here. On the front fender, what I wanna do is I wanna cover at least the width of the tire. So if you draw a hypothetical line out, that would be your worst case scenario for your fender. So I'm gonna cover up to the logo and then, and then up a little higher up here, whatever's visible, right? And I just noticed that I'm missing a bolt. Anyway, so what works is uh, starting on this panel and then covering it with a shorter piece. Before we get to that, make sure you get a sharp knife, like an X-Acto knife or a fresh razor blade. Then I have this little tool I got for uh, vinyl wraps. It's actually a little pin on the end, so you can actually pop bubbles. Uh, if you're getting air bubbles, and you will get some, which is fine. It's temporary. It's not this professional stuff you find on Ferraris and stuff that's permanent for, well, at least semi-permanent, you know, like vinyl wrap. So you can, eye, you can eyeball a length, a little oversize, and take your razor blade, cut it off the roll, and now I have this piece. So I'm going to start at the bottom, and I just drop it on the floor. Don't do that. Hey, take two. This is not the one off the floor. Jeez, oh my God. So I'm just gonna line it up off of the trim and take my index finger in the middle, move my way outwards. I'm just gonna stick it on there. And now we can take our squeegee that came with the kit and you can buy extras of these, uh, but one side is felt lined, which is nice. And I'm just gonna start in the middle and work, work my way out. And like I said, you're going to get bubbles, so don't, don't freak out about it, guys. I think the thing you have to be careful of is if you push too hard, is you will tear the material, and it looks like a rock chip, actually. And, and again, not a big deal. It's for the track. You're going to get, you know, some dings anyway. So I'll show you underneath here. This is what I'm talking about. So edge. Okay, see how it lays it down. And my apologies, I forgot. Make sure that paint is clean and preferably already ceramic coated or waxed. That makes it easier to take this off. And right here is where I pushed a little too hard with the squeegee and I tore it. So since it's temporary, it doesn't matter to me. And then you take your razor blade and cut this excess off and then fold it in. Just don't touch your paint. 
So this is always a challenge when you have a curve. So this is a concave curve, and then you have a convex curve and you're trying to put the material together. It's gonna to wanna to overlap itself, which is not gonna work. It's not gonna to stick to, to it. So either you make a decision now and you cut one, you cut here and keep this bottom piece or you keep the top piece or you just cut the whole thing off and do that whole section as one piece. I'm gonna go ahead and take, extend this bend in the fender and I'm gonna cut straight through like so. And now I can lay down this piece. And now I can lay down this piece as well, starting in the middle. And it's not gonna wanna, if it decides not to work, no big deal. So I'm gonna cut that off and put a brand new piece over it. And there's the first piece. So I'm gonna take another piece and put it over here and another piece to go up on here. I noticed that this height is actually perfect because this is more, um, it's further than the tire. So I don't have to put another piece here up to the emblem, like I said. So pretty happy with that. Well, let me finish this and I'll show you if any issues arise. So this works out pretty good. I just have one rec short rectangular piece I put on there onto this surface and then I'm gonna just bend it over the inner fender. Like so. And then I will trim it to that size right in here. Just added a piece right here. And this, I could add some more, but I think I'm okay. So I am done with the passenger side front fender. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rear. And one really quick thing I wanna show you on the rear is just overlapping panels. Hey, the rear has its own challenges because it's a complex curve. I started all the way at the bottom, went all the way up, and you can see the edge right here. But the tire, if I were to come up, it comes up to here. So I actually need two layers. So it's pretty easy, but what you wanna do is overlap that bottom layer by about a quarter inch. So there are bubbles in there. I honestly don't know if I could have done a better job. I thought I did a pretty good job. So I have one more piece just to put on here and uh, I can call it good. All right, so that took me about a half hour. What? Oh, yeah. They make uh, head socks too, so I can't wait to try it at the track. Now there's two things I want to test, obviously besides how it works at the track, is the trip there is uh, 100 miles. So I don't know if it's gonna stay on the freeway or not at freeway speed. So that's gonna be a good test. And then obviously, how does it perform at the track? So when we come back right here, is gonna be the results after track day. And that'll be another episode. Is that track day is gonna be a blast. It's my first time autocrossing in the GTO. So subscribe if you haven't. Hey guys, made it 100 miles up here to uh, the track. Coding has not budged uh, anywhere, so I'm pretty happy about that. So, wish me luck. At the end of the day, I'll show you how to take it off. Be right back. All right guys, it lasted all track day. Pretty awesome. I'm in a rush to get home, so when I get home, I'll show you how to take it off. Be right back. We're back. So this is after a hundred miles up, a hundred miles back, uh, seven sessions, I think it was, uh, auto crossing. And I can feel some marks out of here. This is pretty awesome. Um, but something to note, this started to come undone. Now, I don't know if that's from the drive or how long it's been. I'd be willing to bet what happened here was when I put this on, I stretched it. And if you stretch this stuff and try to put it on, it's not gonna stick very well. So that's something I learned. Um, but when we take this off, it's pretty simple on, the, on little pieces like this. 
pretty straightforward. And you can see the nicks out of there. I, th I think you can see it in the camera, I don't know. But I can see some dimples in there from rock impact. So I'm just gonna take the short pieces off. Now when it comes to the big piece, what you're gonna wanna do is pull on it this way. You do not wanna lift it straight off, like at a 90 degree or worse, because you can take the paint off if you're not careful. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually pulling this way and outward at the same time. So it's like it's stretching it. Bam! Nice, you can see how dirty this is up here <laughs> versus here. So, hey, it worked awesome. So that track armor worked really well. It's, it's super low cost. I think I got it on Amazon. I'll leave a link below, but I highly recommend it. And as you can tell, it was actually on for uh, five days. I put it on like on a Thursday. Uh, I drove the 100 miles on Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, 100 miles back, and it's Tuesday. So now that's five days. So it was on the car for five days. Um, again, do not stretch it and try to put it on. It will come off easy. But other than that, man, I'll, it worked. The most exciting part is I went autocrossing for the first time. So subscribe if you haven't, because next video is going to be footage from that event. Thanks for hanging out. Until next time, building fast, driving faster. See ya.